after writing two transformational books myself and supporting many other beings to do the same, I've become enthralled by the deep and mysterious magic that's activated when we choose to say yes to ourselves and commit to the book writing journey. Of course, we want to inspire change and new perspectives in our readers, but the transformation that happens as an author, both throughout the writing process and by actually releasing your book into the world is surprisingly potent. I know I've been blindsided in the most disruptive and delicious ways by some of the changes my books have brought into my life. Writing a book is like casting a spell. Although we can never be completely sure what's going to be unleashed during the process, we choose to do it anyway. This Unbound One is a heroic journey. Each book has the potential to be a magical portal, a doorway to a new world, both for you and your reader. Each book has a very specific medicine that it's here to share with us. And each book gives us the opportunity to alchemize the magnificent imperfection of our experience into gold. The truth is that anyone can write a book. We could all get a few thousand words down and put them together. But what fascinates me is what happens when we allow the book writing process to go deeper. When we say, fuck it, get naked and dive way down beneath the surface letting go of the shoulds and any need to be acceptable, sensible or approved of. What fascinates me is what happens when we make ourselves fully available to being transformed by the very act of writing a book. This is Unbound Writing and this is the process we'll be exploring together here in the Unbound Writers Club. I'm Nicola Humber, author and founder of The Unbound Press, and I help magical beings to write the transformational book they're really here to write at this time. I'm your guide here in The Unbound Writers Club, and the aim of this podcast is to help you to feel supported, encouraged, activated as you embark on your book writing journey. Whether you're a first-time author or have many books out in the world, my hope is that you will find something here to inspire you. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to the Unbound Writers Club. Today is one of our Unbound Book Club episodes where we are featuring the book that is this month's pick in the Unbound Book Club. And that book is Take Off Your Armour and Have a Cup of Tea by Angie Northward. Angie is now known as Greer Hart. She's changed her name since she wrote Take Off Your Armour. And I am joined by Greer today to talk about this incredible book which was released back in 2019 it was one of the first releases through the unbound press take off your armor and have a cup of tea it carries a message of love compassion and commitment to creating inclusive community for a future full of kindness nurturing and nourishment for each other and our beautiful planet earth and like if we don't need that right now I don't know what we do need it just feels like the perfect book for these times in this conversation Brea and I we talk about her experience of writing this book and actually how it led to her next book which is going to be out later this year as well Brea is somebody I have known for a number of years I think we met back in 2013, around that time, when I visited where she lives in beautiful Wales. And we immediately felt a sense of connection. And I'm really excited to introduce you to her today. So let's dive in. So Brea, welcome to the Unbound Writers Club. Thank you. Lovely to be here. Oh, <laughs> So gorgeous uh, to be here with you. And I always begin these conversations with the same question. And I know I've asked you this question before and I will ask you it again. Um, Yeah. But right now, in this moment, what does it mean to you to be an unbound writer? Oh, goodness. You know, I listen to all the podcasts and every time you ask that question, something different comes into my mind. Mm -hmm. And um, 
and I was thinking, what did I say last time? I don't, which of course doesn't matter because that was last time you just said right now in this moment. And I guess that's what it is. It's, it's being in the moment. It's um, feeling into what's present for me. That changes, that changes with the seasons, that changes with what's going on in my life, that changes with the moon. So right now it's being so present in nature. You know, we were saying before you pressed record how much we both love this time of year. You know, Mm. spring is just so beautiful, you know, that promise of abundance. And so for me right now being unbound is, is, is being very deeply in connection with that because I am out on the land as much as I possibly can be. And now that the sun is starting to shine and the air is becoming warmer, it's just so blissful. And so being unbound in relation to that is giving myself permission to do that and not get caught up in, well, have I done the washing up? Oh, the beds need to be made. Oh, I haven't done that. You know, that that just, I know that that's not important. You know, life goes on without having a, a neat bed or dishes washed. Mm. life is out there in the fields life is out there with the with the rebirth of of nature and in in terms of relating that to my writing you know I've really started to feel that that is coming in again for me Mm. because there's been there's been a bit of a um a downtime on that since finishing my last book so not take off your armor but the other one which I know we're going to mention later and I've, again, I've given myself permission to have that downtime and not to um, feel like, well, you know, nothing's coming through. So I'm not a writer anymore. And where have my ideas gone? You're really, really understanding that it's just a time of allowing what's been to permeate and percolate and just be in the cauldron. And it's, you know, it's all just simmering beautifully. But now with spring, that rebirth of Um, new ideas and creativity and energy is just starting to to bubble up from the cauldron and in fact the the full moon that we've just had again I said to you just before you pressed record Rob and I were down in the caravan by the stream and the full moon I could see the full moon and hear the water and I wrote uh, a line some time ago which I love which is meet me by the river where the meadow sweet grows and lots of other words just started to flow through and it just felt so gorgeous so for me right now that's that's what being an unbound writer is I was just transported by <laughs> listening to you <laughs> speak about that for, like I could feel myself like on the land with you and you know I'm so grateful to you and your willingness to kind of allow and be with (coughs) you know your own cyclical nature and certainly the cyclical nature of your creativity and I love the way you spoke to that there Mm. and Mm. yeah it made me think about this book like take off your armor and have a cup of tea I'm holding it in my hands as as we're speaking Um, and obviously it's featured in the Unbound Book Club this month and picked it up before we were going to be speaking and you know I said to you I just found myself getting really kind of drawn into the the book I I haven't read it for a little while and it's like (laughs) oh um just looking through and such just such a powerful book for your first book that you wrote I mean I'm quite in awe that it was your first book (laughs) um but I wonder for those listening who you know maybe have joined us or are going to be joining us in the Mm -hmm. book club this lunar month what's the book about Hmm. it's about being a mother of a child who shows up differently in the world. I'm not even going to expand on that because that's kind of the point, really, you know, using that language and anybody who's drawn to reading the book after this, which I hope people will be, will understand why I don't want to expand on it. So it's about how my daughter and the fact that she does show up differently in the world and how I have needed to shift my own internal perceptions and attitudes and beliefs about what it is to be a human being in this world and the gift that she's given me and so many others to 
to be in the world exactly as you are, to show up as exactly who you are in any given moment. And that's such a powerful gift. Mm. Um, so the book is, is about that. And it's also about the difficulties that I have encountered over the years because she shows up differently in the world. And that's from external pieces, you know, external people, the external structures and systems, um, and how I learned to navigate that. It's definitely a celebration of who my daughter is, Molly. Yeah. And when I when I first knew I was going to write the book, I thought, right, it's going to be all about the celebration. And because, you know, that's that's a really strong message in the book that, you know, we need to rewrite the narrative around what it is to have a child who shows up differently in the world mm. um, because it's still painted as um, oh, I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Northwood, you know, your child is is not this. You know, that that still gets said to parents, you know. So I really wanted people to come away from reading it, having a different perception themselves and seeing the, the gift, seeing the joy, seeing the how it opens doors for you. And there is a lot of that in the book, obviously. But it also, when I started to write it, you know, the book really said to me, hang on a minute, you know, that that's part of the story, but you do also need to tell the parts that were difficult, that were heartbreaking. And I will say right now, you know, it was never about Molly having the differences that she has. It was about how it's perceived by others, how she was treated by others within the structures and systems that, that exist. So there needed to be that story as well. <clears throat> and it also, and then it flows into the story of myself being a changing woman, uh, my initiation, my menopausal initiation, and how Molly really enabled me to journey that um, with a very different perspective to that which I had been taught, told, shown, which largely is nothing because you know yeah. people don't talk about the menopause. So it's though it's those two pieces together. So it's you know the, the gift, the joy of who Molly is and what she brings to the world and how she enabled me to walk the path of being a changing woman very differently to that which I know my mother experienced and many, many women experienced. And I'm sure we'll get more into that mm -hmm. later on. And then also within the book, I share um, stories. that So ever since Molly was very, very young, we've always written stories that describe what she's done during the day, larger, primarily because she loves to hear that back. And mm -hmm. there was also some sort of, at one point, uh, learning surrounded by that. Um, so that she could play around with her recall and understanding the concepts of what she's been doing during the day. But that kind of dropped away <laughs> when we started <laughs> to home educate and moved into a different space of being. But the stories I wanted to share, because they really demonstrate very simply, very joyfully, very beautifully, Molly's life, which is just so full of, of happiness, mm -hmm. just so full of loving each moment so that felt very important to share that um, and I also wanted to sh share tools for other people who are reading it who perhaps have not been offered this perspective before and who are still very trapped within a very narrow idea of how we you know support and I'm doing that in inverted commas and educate and again within very narrow restrictive structures and systems so I've, I also share tools and just practices that I, that I found for myself along the way that supported me to nurture and nourish myself to look after myself because one of the big lessons was learning to nurture and nourish myself there was a big phase where I didn't do that and I became depleted and I became depressed and you know all of the stuff that goes along with that so you know there's also a very strong message to say we all need to learn how to self-care and love mm. and ask others for help. Yeah, which actually brings me back to the title of the book, like Take Off Your Armour, which, <clears throat> you know, obviously there's a message there. And as you were speaking, thinking about, like I know for a big part of this story, like you're very much in warrior mode, like inclusion warrior, mm. yes. you know, being a warrior for yeah. Molly and her experience and so there's something there 
from like you know absolutely needing to be in that place and with that energy and then coming to this place of being able to let take the armor off and Mm -hmm. a softening yeah yeah absolutely yeah 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 inclusion warrior is definitely what I was for many many years because I had to be that that was all I knew how to do and I wasn't just doing it for for Molly and us as a family I was doing it I was supporting other parents Um, yeah but that was my work at the time Mm -hmm. um so the armor it was being that you know it's interesting because I, I in fact I say in the book I thought for a long time I was very much in the le- you know dealing with it all from the left side of my brain you know the very masculine linear but actually I realized writing my second book that that wasn't the case I it, you know the reason I became depleted and depressed was because I was ha- coming up against that that you know left linear masculine mm. energy but I was and I had my armor on but my emotional body my my sensitive body was still coming from the right side of my brain and you know just you know, always like, how can people think like that? How can people say those things? How, you know, why are people not connected into the compassion and the love? And so it was, that, you know, that was going on. And then, as you say, learning to take off that armor, that that came from being a menopausal woman. That came mm-hmm. from that initiation, that journey, that peace in my life. And, um, and of course, you know, writing the book itself was a hugely healing journey and I, it's fantastic that it you know that, that our connection happened again at that point mm. where I was really deeply into the initiation of my menopause and I needed to look at being in my armor for all of those years and knew that there was still healing that I needed to do and it was you know writing the book was so potent in in that respect of you know being able to to recall those moments and look back at those moments and have the the holding of the unbound writing mastermind you know how you hold that space for us as writers as unbound writers to again it was giving myself permission again to be vulnerable because I'd kind of you know compartmentized that when I came here I you know I'd already done a lot of healing and I'd spent five years sitting in circle with with other sisters doing some really deep diving and then then uh you know the initiation called to me say okay this piece needs to be looked at and people had said to me over the years you know you you've got a book and you write a book about all of this and up until that moment it was like no 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 I don't want to well you know go there and and look I've I've done that you know thank you I'm now in doing this and it's all lovely and you know but then that piece was called in to to really look at that and um so yeah writing writing it out and then putting it out in the world was deeply healing and I then was allowed to take off the armor you know it was in the process of writing the book that the the title came and I suddenly realized oh my goodness I've taken off my armor and I can I can sit at the kitchen table and talk about these things and have a cup of tea and it's all from a very different place it's from a place of knowing and understanding what that was and now knowing and understanding that is no longer but it's of value to share with other people because other people will be experiencing that but now it's time to to shift into a different place and I think I say at the end of the book you know, now I can think about things like when I'm no longer here, mm. which is throw me into complete panic yeah. to now, you know, well, it, it's inevitable. Of course, I'm not going to be here at some point, but, you know, I cannot and will not and do not spend my days freaking out about it Yeah, because that's not going to change anything other than my own well-being. Exactly. Exactly. So, so powerful. And you spoke there about (coughs) recognizing kind of the the value that this, like sharing your experience has for others. And I'm so glad you mentioned that because I think often when we're thinking about sharing our own story or stories, there could be a tendency to think, oh, well, you know, who who really is going to be interested in that? Or maybe people who've had a very similar experience to me um, might be interested, but, you know, it's going to be quite niche. And actually this book like proves that <laughs> to be completely wrong because 
Um, yeah. Like as soon as I started reading it, there was so much that spoke to me in the book. Mm-hmm. And I mean, who would you say the book is for, Brett? I think for anybody who 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 wants to or is being called to living a more unbound life. Mm. And I wouldn't necessarily have used that language as I started the book, but certainly through writing it and being involved for many years now with the unbound writing sisterhood. Mm. Um, it, it's, 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 it's for everybody because, you know, we're all in this together. <laughs> yeah. And the whole point of, of, well, not the whole point, but, you know, one of the big pieces was, I, I, you know, I want people to understand that, you know, whoever we are, however we show up, we all have something to offer each other. We are inseparable. And, and because, so, you know, segregation is still so powerful in the world, you know, whether it's around disability or sexuality or, or race or, you know, whatever it is, there's still a lot of segregation and discrimination and people, you know, just putting themselves into boxes and putting other people into boxes and we don't get to experience the full spectrum of the gifts that each one of us brings into the world when we do that. Mm. It's very damaging to ourselves to do that because how can we learn and celebrate and challenge ourselves? You know, it's really about challenging all of the stories that, that we've been led to believe from the moment that we come into the world. And that's not to blame anybody. You know, another thing I learned to do was to forgive all of those people who brought what they brought to the table because that was their experience. But I, you know, I really know that for every person I've ever encountered in relation to offering a different perspective, some sort of seed will have been planted. And whether that's a person on the bus who has given a strange look and I would have responded in, in a way of welcoming them into my space Mm. um, or or a doctor using uh, medical model language and challenging that. And I mean, there's all sorts of things, you know, just offering people a different perspective because we all, we all have prejudices, prejudices, you know, we all come with those backstories, but unless we are all having an opportunity to meet each other and be with each other and experience those things and get past the discomfort of not understanding something, Mm -hmm. you know, rather than shutting it down, be willing and open to to learn something different, to to, to explore a different. Be curious. You know, let's be curious about life. There's yeah. so much, so much that that's there to offer us. So let's be curious about it, oh, yeah. and and unafraid to ask. And um, yeah. Mm, yeah that just feels so rich like the richness of life like all of these different experiences and perspectives which as you said and I I feel like this is happening more and more like people are getting shut down and put into boxes um you know that's certainly something that seems to have been happening more like the world becoming more divisive rather than less um over the past few years a couple of years since take off your armor was written actually so it feels like a more important book than ever I I Mm. believe and I do want to talk about the next book as well um I know we're focusing on take off your armor for the book club (laughs) but I couldn't not talk about the next book which is very much kind of in the works just going through the final design stages Mm. at the moment and (laughs) You know, it feels like it, it flows on so beautifully from Take Off Your Armour and Have a Cup of Tea. So can you yes. tell us about the new book? Mm. Yeah, so the new book is Menopause Wisdoms, mm. Stories of Women Becoming Crone. And it re- it was birthed from Take Off Your Armour. Absolutely, there's no doubt about that. You know, when I finished Take Off Your Armour, um, I, I knew, even before I finished it, actually, that the seed had been planted for the second book. Because when I finished Take Off Your Armour, I, I was still in my menopause journey. It, you know, it hadn't completed. Well, I mean, it doesn't complete because, you know, we become postmenopausal crone and, and the journey continues. So I knew that that that, that book was calling to be written and then I went to the Unbound retreat um, and of course that that was also interesting um, 
but I'll save that for the next time we talk. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so, so, so menopause wisdoms. So I do. So again, it's about offering a different perspective. So, you know, I, I spoke about that earlier here, you know, of, of offering different perspectives to just to kind of, you know, hopefully activate people to be curious about how things can be different if they want them to be. Mm. You know, it's, it's not um, it's not prescriptive to say, well, you need to do it like this in order not to have it like that. You know, it's 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 an invitation to just to, you know, challenge what you've been told about the menopause, because, you know, let's face it, we are told, you know, one story. There are other stories trickling in, but they they still tend to be sort of on the side of the hormones and hormone replacement treatment and you know that's that sort of perspective so I really wanted to offer the you know the story of how it is an initiation and you know how it calls to us to to look at all of that backstory which you thought was going on in take off your armor so you know I I I begin the book with with offering a different perspective you know rewriting the narrative as as I um, explain it and then I I do give my own story in interview so I, I I decided to interview a group of women to have their stories because I thought it was really important to to have other women's voices out there you know let women speak for themselves but what their experience is whatever it is which is all so important for, for us to hear as other women and other men, you know, let's invite men into this conversation as well. Everybody, let's bring everybody into this conversation. And and so th- there were there were you interviewed me to share my story, which was just so magical. Mm-hmm. Um, and just so the listeners know, Nicola is also one of the women that I interviewed. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so it's offering twelve women's perspective of their menopausal journey and they're all at different phases and stages of that and um and then the the last bit of the book is again sharing practices that I found that really supported me really again nurtured and nourished me throughout my initiation and continue to do so and they they're shared again not as a prescriptive thing so well if you do this you're going to feel really good it's just like no you know this is what worked for me you know, have a look at it, try it, and and then create your own from it. Because that's a huge piece for us as menopausal women, you know, to to tap into that innate wisdom and that soulful knowing of what is right for each of us. Yeah. And that's, you know, not going to be the same thing necessarily. So I hope that the book really encourages and supports women to, you know, explore that part of it, of um, finding what works for you. Yeah. And let it be your story. Let it be her story. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Mm. And yeah, hearing the different voices in the book. I mean, it's such a gift Mm. because, you know, it sparked off so much for me. Well, just having you ask the questions of me initially sparked off so much for me. And then getting to read the words of the other women who were included in the book. It just, yeah helped kind of affirm and activate so yes. much so I'm very excited for menopause mm. wisdoms to make yeah. its way into the world I in the not too distant future we haven't got like the yes. yet, but you know it's, no, no. it's coming isn't it um it's, yeah it, it is yeah Linda the the designer is working on the interior at the moment and it's it's looking gorgeous and I just got real shivers as you were saying that about the other women's voices and um yeah it's very exciting yeah it really is and we will de- we'll definitely be having another conversation around the release of Menopause Wisdom, yes. all yeah, about that incredible nice. book. And the great thing is for people reading Take Off Your Armour in the book club, they won't have too long to wait before kind yeah. of moving into Menopause Wisdom. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and yes, because it, it really does flow from that. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I think it will be really interesting for readers to, to see that, you know, the, the changes that have happened from you know, that first part of my story to the second part of my story. And I, I would imagine, I mean, I, I, I haven't read Take Off Your Armour for, well, since it was published, which is a couple of years ago now. Yeah. And I did think, oh, shall I read it before we do this podcast? And, but, you know, no, the answer was no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. It would be interesting just to, to read that the last bit, you know, of my menopausal journey, that point to see how different my voice is now. You know, we continue 
to change, you know, and just, oh, my goodness, becoming crone is just such a magnificent journey to be on. It's, uh, you know, the unboundedness that, that just continues and rises and flows and calls is so beautiful. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And I want to thank you, Brad, for being a voice um, of the changing woman, of changing women um because that comes through so strongly in take off your armor and obviously menopause wisdoms and whatever books flow through next as well I'm sure um it's been such a pleasure to connect Mm. and have this conversation today for me too and for those listening Bria who'd like to find out some more about you and your work what's the best way for them to connect with you the best way and the only way is mm, yeah. <laughs> which is www.spiralsofwellbeing.co.uk and um and that's very intentional um you know I never really enjoyed Facebook that was the only social platform I ever did and it really didn't work for me and I've never entered into any of the others which is perfect for me that's how I'm feel most comfortable in the world so you can contact me through my website really easy just go to the contacts page or subscribe Mm. yeah and there's even a telephone number on there so if you want to phone me you can phone me I'm an old-fashioned girl at heart I love that I love that and I really want to recommend um subscribing to you know signing up on your website and receiving your your emails are always such such a gift to receive um yeah I really appreciate really appreciate them and I really appreciate you thank you so much thank you Nicola yeah you have been a gift in my life for sure and lots more exciting things to come (gasps) oh yes (laughs) (laughs) 